Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to talk about bar graphs versus pie charts. Now, bar graphs and pie charts are typically utilized to graph or chart qualitative data, right? Or qualitative variable that you may have. So in terms of qualitative, if you've forgotten the difference between qualitative and quantitative, so I'll put a link up above to that so you can check that out. It's a, not a very long video and it gives you numerous examples. Now, coming back to this, I'm going to do a bar graph and a pie chart from scratch so that just you can see how to construct it. And I'm going to show it to you by example, which I think is kind of the best way to learn. So you're obviously going to have to collect and then organize your data in some way. So the number of samples that you have, I don't know what has happened there, but let's say that we have already collected and organized everything. And here's a table and here is, I made this up, but it's a random data collection of patient preferences to meals at a health network. So our variable here is patient preferences to meals that we may have. And then, so those preferences, so notice here it says breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, supper, or no preference at all. On the patients, so were those numbers that represents, so my sampling technique, whichever one I have used, I have been able to collect all of this. And I found that 1,256 patients prefer breakfast, 940 prefer lunch, 1725 prefer snack, and so on. So now I'm going to begin with constructing a bar graph. So a bar graph will always have a title. I know that your teachers don't like when you don't have a title. It's going to have your x axis, your horizontal axis. So in this case, because we have these meals, so the preferences to meals, so we're gonna have breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, supper, or no preference at all. So our variable there is gonna take on those values. And then your results are gonna go on the y-axis. So in this case, how many patients, okay, in terms of their preferences for each one of the data ones. So breakfast, lunch, snack, or so on. So that's gonna go in the y. So we're going to have an x-axis and a y-axis. We're going to have to label those. All right. So we're going to have to label those. And then we're going to be drawing bar graphs. So we're going to it's a bar and then we're going to proportionally scale it so that it basically gives us what the results here are. So let's begin. So I have kind of put a title already so I didn't have to worry about it. Now my axes, so I'm going to draw my axes within. And again, in order to draw your axes, the x-axis here will be easy because here is breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, supper, no preference. So I know that I have that going on the x-axis and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so it's going to be six bars going up. But now on your y-axis, how are you going to be scaling that y-axis? And that y-axis, so typically take a look and see, you know, for instance, your smallest result, which is 522, and your largest one in this case is 1725. So it would make sense for us, you know, to scale it so that it goes somewhere above 1700. So either 1800, maybe 2000. And now how are we going to be scaling it, right? So are you going to be scaling those y-axis by 100s? by 200s, 300s, that's honestly up to you and how you want to be able to show that bar graph visually to someone else. So I'm going to go basically from zero all the way up to, so I have to go above 1725. So let's say I'm going to go up to 2000. So it's from zero to 2000. And I'm going to scale this up. So now notice, now it's going to do a little bit of playing here. So what I'm going to do is let's say 2000. So that means let's, let's divide it up by 200. So that means I'm going to have 10 kind of little spaces there. So this is what I would do. So let's say I have, so here is my, my graph and I'm going to start and let's say my 2000 would have been somewhere here. So 2000, and then this is would have been 1800. 
1600 14 1200 1000 800 600 400 200 0 okay so that's going to be my x axis my y axis pardon me all right so so that's what i'm going to do and so this was 0 200 400 600 800 1000 so 1200 14 16 18 2000 now that i have to be able to label this right so here so this will be let's say number of patients all right for that particular preference that they will have now my x-axis so i have basically i'm going to construct and i have all the way so notice from breakfast lunch snack dinner su um, supper no and no preference so that is six so i'm going to have six of these so i'm just going to see here now i have grid paper so let's say if i went these three these three so what i'm scaling here is i'm trying to see if i can fit so that's one two three four five six okay so i'm going to be able to fit six here now the reason why i do that is my bar graphs are going to kind of look like this all right so i wanted to properly scale this out so i wanted to show you how to do that so here is my so that's how whoops that's how far i'm gonna have to go now that i know so that these so this is going to be so from here to here so from here to here so that's going to be breakfast now you can do it in two ways you can write this out so i can literally write it out and just say so on a i'll kind of write it on a slant so this would be breakfast all right so like that or what you can do so now i'm going to be writing all of them through so i'm going to go breakfast lunch snack dinner so this is breakfast now here so this is going to be my next one and that was so somewhere from here to here so breakfast and that was snack second, no, lunch and snack. That's going to be lunch. Now it's going to be here, snack. So from here to here. So that's snack. Now from here to here. Let me just label these out for myself. This is dinner. This is supper. And no preference. So those are going to be my bar graphs going up now. Now you could have written, for example, B, L, S, D. All right. Now S, you may be supper. So S, U, and then for snack, S, N and then N for no preference, and then you could have done a legend. You could have basically said that B stands for breakfast, L stands for lunch, so you can do that as well. And now once you have that, now you can go ahead and construct your actual, and this is, so right here, I'm gonna write, so patient preferences, patient meal preferences. We have to label that as well. So notice we've labeled the Y, we've labeled the X, we have a title, and now we can go ahead and construct these. So now constructing, so 1256, 940, 1725, and I'm going to construct the bars accordingly. All right, so I'll kind of probably speed it up and then you'll see the result. Okay, let's do it.
All right, so now that we have constructed them, so notice we have, so breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, and so on. These are the bar graphs that we've created. Some people will change the colors, so you can certainly change the colors if you want. You don't have to necessarily. And then also sometimes what you'll find are bar graphs to very easily, although the left-hand side more or less tells you, sometimes what you will find is that the researcher or the people who's actually presenting the data, they might actually write the actual values there. All right, so for example, breakfast 1256, so that kind of pops out at you. This would have been 940, and you could have done that and, and so on. You could write it out here, or sometimes you put it right in the column. So for example, you can put it in the column as well. Just be consistent. So whatever it is that you choose, all right, so either write it there or write it on top, but be consistent. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just delete these things in. All right, so that it's nice and clean there. And that is your entire graph that you have. All right, so that's what it would have been. That is an example of a bar graph of presenting the data. In this case, for meal preferences of patients that you have, which is basically a qualitative data. Now, how would a pie chart be constructed from exactly the same thing? So a pie chart is basically you have a circle that looks like a pie, and then you will proportionally put all of the items in your chart. All right, so let's take a look and see how we can do that. So I'm gonna construct it from exactly the same thing. So let me go back here to the table. Now notice the table has two other values, so I'm going to use those, sorry, two other columns. So I'm going to construct now a pie chart from this. So a pie chart, what you have is, you have all of the patients. Now, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find out, okay, what is the total number of patients? So I can take a look and add it all up. I'm going to need that information because in a pie chart, you basically scale things by percentages, not by actual values. So I'm just adding all of these up. So this is my sample size. My sample size is 6,231. Just added all of them up. Great. So I have that. Now, next, what I will do is I'm going to calculate the percent that each of these takes up. So for instance, what I'm gonna do is 1256 divided by 6231. Now when you multiply that by 100, so that's going to be approximately 20.2%. I'm gonna round it there to the 10th. All right, so that is my first one. Now, my second one, which is 940 divided by 6231. I'm going to fill all of these out. I'll fast forward so that you have it all filled up nice. So now we have all our percents. Now, when you're rounding, you do have to be careful a bit because if you round and you're constantly rounding up or down, you may find that when you add this entire thing up, it may not be exactly equal to 100%, but of course it should be, all right? So you can then go back and realign, okay? So then you can say, okay, do I want to round to one decimal place or two decimal places to do it appropriately? Okay, so you can try to do that and then see, okay, when you're adding it all up, it should add up to 100. So for this percentages, now that I've rounded this and it's rounded to the 10th, the next thing is that we need for a pie chart because a pie chart is, again, it's a circle. Now we have to be able to scale that circle to 360 degrees because a circle so if you talk about angles of a circle, it's basically 360 degrees. And so what I mean by that is, so let me just show you. And this is what I like to do is when I 
um, plunk this in. Now, I, you know, you can create this on your own as well. So I have a kind of a predetermined circle, right? So that I can kind of see here. Notice it starts right there at zero and then it goes. So your angles that you have just keeps going around and it's 360 degrees around for this particular chart. So now let me make it a little bit smaller so that it kind of fits on our page here. So that's what we would have. And I'll show you how I use this and how I create my pie chart out of this. I actually lay it on top of that. And of course, then afterwards, you can just remove it. Okay. So if I go back here, how do I scale by 360 degrees? Well, what you do is you take the percent. So whatever percent it is, you take your percentage. So this is going to be 20%. So 20.2%. And then you multiply it by 360 degrees, and that will tell you what is the angle, for example, for breakfast. So what I'm going to do is, so this is 20, so 0 0.202 multiplied by and 360 degrees. So this is approximately 73 degrees. I'm going to round this to that. So it would take 73 degrees okay, of our entire pie chart. And now you do exactly the same thing for all the other ones. So again, I'm going to kind of fast forward and then fill this up for us. So that completes the portions, the angles in our pie chart that we have. So now when you add all of this up, you know, make sure that this adds up to 360 degrees. Just double check. Again, you can then round accordingly to obtain that. So now what do we do with all of these values? So this for breakfast, this for lunch, and so on. Now we have to clunk it back into our pie chart and create it. So we have all of this data, we have the degrees, we have the percentages, so now we have to plunk them into a pie chart. So how do you do it? You can start with breakfast, all right? Put breakfast first, then go to lunch, go to snack, go to dinner, go to supper, go to no preferences. You can certainly do that. Or you can re realign them, so you start with the biggest one, and then you go all the way down to the smallest one, which is typically what may happen. So let's do that. All right. On a pie chart. So I'm going to take, so my largest one is snacks. All right. So snacks is the largest, then it's breakfast, then it's supper. So I'm going to do it in that particular order. So here is my pie. So what I do is I will create, so I'm going to create a circle here. So this is my circle. I'm going to scale it out here so that it's nicely kind of goes out. All right, let me make it bigger. Okay. And now I will go ahead. So notice I'm going to go from here to zero. And now I have to put 100. So I have, so here is my 100. So I'm going to go from here all the way to 100, which is right there. And now that 100, so you don't put the degrees in there, you will put snacks was 27.7. So you're going to put 27.7% and that was for snacks. So that's the display that you would put there. Now you can put the next largest one. And the next largest one was breakfast, 73 degrees. And how do you do that? So notice you're at 100. So I'm going to put breakfast next. So that's going to be plus 73. So I have to go to 173. So that's my next one that I have. So in here, so 173. So I'm going to start right there, 173. So notice how nice this is because I can just go ahead and find that. This is breakfast now. So that's breakfast. And 
breakfast, so for that, was 20.2%. So this is 20.2% of that pie. And now we're going to continue. So I'm going to be finding, so the next one, so the next largest one. So I had snack, breakfast. Next one is supper. So supper, I'm going to put supper here, 64. So that's this plus 64. So that's 237. So I'm going to take that from there and 237. So that's there. So that's supper. I'm going to write that in. Supper. And supper was 17.8%. So that's 17.8% in terms of a preference. Now I can go back, find the next one. So now I have breakfast, snack, supper. Next one is lunch. All right, so lunch is next. So that's this plus lunch, which is 54 equals 291. So 291, so that's going to go right there. So that is going to be lunch. And lunch was 15.1%. Now I have already four of them, and then that, that leaves me two of them, the last ones. So we had no preferences, was 39%. So answer plus 39, so that's 330. So that's gonna get us to here. So that's no preferences. Now notice if you can't fit it, you know, you can put it, so no, no preferences. And then that no preferences that we had was 10.9%. 10.9%, and then finally, that left our last one, dinner, which was 8.4%. So this is dinner, 8.4%. Now, once you finish this, this is basically how your pie chart will look. Now, of course, you can't have those degrees in there, so what we typically will do is, you know, I mean, I've kind of cheated because I had those, but that was just to show you how it goes and how you would do that. So what I would do is now I would, let's say, let me copy this. All right, I'll put it down and notice voila. Now you can color them in if you wanted to, right? So that it looks nice. Uh, those no preferences kind of look sloppy. So if you're doing it for a test or project, you wanna do it really nice so that your teachers can see it. And also do not forget, you know, you would put your title in here and that's how you would actually construct a pie chart. All right. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video.